Now, with coverage you trust, this is 10 News Conference. Last week, Governor Lincoln Chafee vetoed a bill that would have allowed for a Choose Life license plate in Rhode Island. Chafee said it would violate the separation of church and state doctrine since half the proceeds of the $40 plate were to go to the CareNet organization, that's a Christian-based organization in Providence that operates so-called pregnancy crisis centers. Good morning, I'm Jim Chiaracani, along with our political reporter, Bill Rapley. So to debate this issue and others, our guests today on 10 News Conference are Barth Bracey, the executive director of the Rhode Island Right to Life Committee, and Steve Alquist, a writer and artist who is also president of the Humanists of Rhode Island organization. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks Thank you, Chair, for having Mr. me. Mr. Bracey, uh, my, my first question, other than the money involved in this Choose mm -hmm. Life license plate, what, what do people who uh, advocate for that hope to accomplish by putting Choose Life on, of all things, a license plate? Well, I think the, the purpose of the specialty license plates in general is to allow people to uh, uh, purchase a plate that they can put on their car that uh, endorses and, and uh, promotes a cause that they believe in, a message they believe in, and at the same time allows those private individuals to give some of their private funds to the charity that uh, sponsors that well, plate. Why don't they just put a bumper sticker on their car? Why does it have to be a license plate? Well, I, I would ask that question of the folks that put the Mr. Potato Head plate forward some 10 years ago or the Audubon Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would say the same thing. And I, I, you know, I think that's a separate question. I, I mean, uh, one can certainly argue uh, against the notion of having specialty plates at all, but so many states have mm -hmm begun that program and offer that program and I'm not really here to debate the merits of that program itself but right. the question of you know we've got these 11 or 12 specialty plates available in Rhode Island and uh, we believe that it's uh, viewpoint discrimination to say that we can't have the choose life Mr. Plate. Alquist uh, do you believe as the governor said that uh, since half of the proceeds was going to a Christian based organization that would be a misuse of tax dollars and um, they're therefore a violation of the church and separation, separation of church and state doctrine. A misuse of tax dollars might be overstating it. I think what it is is a uh, violation of church and state because it favors one particular religious view over other particular views. But no one's, no one, this wouldn't be a mandate to buy the plate. It's just no, for but, those people who want to buy the plate. Right, but we also remember that at that point, then we have to open the doors to every other religious point of view out there on any variety of issues. So for a we, license plate. You mean. For a license plate, yeah. right. And, they, and so. Well, would that not be open that to though? Well, could, well I, I, mean, I don't. Somebody could petition the General Assembly, say, you mm -hmm. know, I'm, I would like a, we're, we're atheism. Right. Or, right. or, well, what kind of messages would be too far? I mean, would we have um, things that say, um, there's, a, there's a variety of things. How about um, choose Sharia, for instance? Um, there's a bunch of different things that we can put on license plates that people might find really blur the lines as to what. Uh, this is about. Mm -hmm. So, would it be okay, do you think, to have a plate said, put the Christ back on Christmas? Um, interesting question. I don't know that I haven't thought about that question. I think that our message, the Choose Life message, is not any sort of radical message unless you consider our founding fathers radical for saying, you know, choose life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Um, well, that's a well you know, I, I want to talk about the founding, because this yeah. line of founding fathers comes mm -hmm. up a lot when it you talk does. about this, right? A couple of the founding fathers, in particular, Ben Franklin and Thomas mm -hmm. Jefferson. Mm -hmm. Ben Franklin, at best, was a deist. Mm -hmm. Right. And he's, he said lots of things that were anti-Christian. Mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. he didn't care for the Christian Christianity at all. Uh, you know, there's, there's a quote said, uh, I have found Christian dogma unintelligible early in life. I absenteed myself from Christian assemblies. Lighthouses are more helpful than churches. And as you know, Thomas Jefferson put out the Jefferson Bible, mm -hmm. where he went through the Bible literally mm -hmm. and the scissors Absolutely. cut out all of Christ's miracles. and patch back together what he thought was Christ's philosophy and he didn't believe in the divinity of Jesus. So where's the founding father thing come in? Well, I mean, that's the great thing about America. People have their own opinions, but you know, we had this phrase that I think is still on some of our coins, uh, e pluribus unum, mm -hmm. from many one. And all of these founding fathers who had different opinions and beliefs, they got together and they forged one founding document that I would hope that we all agree on, and that's the Declaration of Independence. So I think that is the guiding principle that we need well, to look at. Well, the guiding principle of our country, or at least, sure. at least for the, the, the laws we have, is the Constitution. Right. And God is not mentioned in the Constitution once. You know, the Declaration of Independence was our nation's founding document. It yeah, preceded the Constitution, right. as you know, by about 12 years, I think. Uh, it was. Uh, when was the Constitution? Rhode Island was the last to ratify the Constitution. That was around 1790, I think. Well, but Rhode, the, Rhode uh, Island was the last to do a lot of things. The Declaration right. was really, uh, the Constitution maybe tells you how, but the Declaration tells you why. The Declaration so is you're, you're, you're admitting you want to bring more uh, religion into government? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, no, I think the declaration is the, you know, the statement of uh, that we're following. We're not trying to bring religious religion into government, but what we're saying is the statement to choose life is not inconsistent with our founding principles. But, but, but See, everybody in this country, abortion. because there are, there are a wide variety of beliefs in this country, as mm -hmm. everyone knows, from atheism to Christianity, mm -hmm. and, and, and the Constitution protects all those different beliefs. And the Constitution is what we live by. We live by a body of laws. Right. We don't live by the Declaration of Independence. Uh, again, I, I would argue that the Constitution is in no way at odds with the Declaration of Independence. My recollection of my grade school and high school history is that the, uh, the chore before the Constitutional Convention was to come up with a document that was able to embody the ideals set forth in the Declaration. Yeah, but so uh, with that, so Steve jumped in. Yeah, so there. the First Amendment, which mm. specifically says separate church and state, or specifically says Congress shall pass no law, establishing religion or giving favor to one religion over another. I, and let me point that out, you did clarify that the, the First Amendment, of course, the Establishment mm -hmm. Clause doesn't contain that. Although the Supreme Court rulings over the years have certainly um, sure, and upheld I think it was that principle being in there. Sure, Jefferson in 18, I think it was 1801 when, mm -hmm. uh, if I remember correctly, it was the, the Baptists in Danbury were concerned because they heard a rumor that the Congregationalists were going to make an effort to have them declared as the national religion and Jefferson wrote them a letter assuring them you know we have we have this separation. And in this state particularly though we have the um, separation of church and state coined by mm. Roger Williams mm. the founder mm. and was very very um, clear that he felt that forced worship stinks mm. in God's nostrils. Um, we know we find that repeated on and over and over through all sorts of religious traditions. Sure. So let me get to, to where you're coming from that there should be an endorsement of any given faith in a government-sponsored... Uh Not at all. In fact, I'm saying uh, what I think we need to do is, number one, distinguish the issues. The message, choose life, is not a religious statement. Uh, but, it's it, but the objection, I think, is that it's a religious group that is in going to accept the money from well, these license plates. I think there are two objections. I think, the number one, there are those who, no matter what group would be sponsoring this plate, there are those who reject and oppose the message on the plate, which is choose life, which is not a religious statement. And I want to go to great pains to distinguish those issues, number one. Well, the, then find the a group that isn't church-sponsored to right. receive the money. Yeah. Well, number one, Cannot Rhode Island is not church-sponsored. There are 501c3, and they are recognized by the IRS as, IRS as being a tax-exempt and uh, tax-deductible charitable organization. The purpose of the plate, the purpose of the funds, is very specific in the it law itself. It is a Christian-based organization. Absolutely. Uh, it says right on your website right. that they, they are, their mission is to bring people to Jesus. But in this country, we have never discriminated against people for their religious views. We no, have. We've a also never let the government endorse a right. religious religion. Right. But the government's not endorsing a religion. If a license plate says doesn't Island say on government, mm. I mean, right. th 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 there is no more th thing that says government than a license plate on a car because it's the government's way of registering a car, find out who owns a car. Right. Again, the people who buy the plates are doing so with their own funds and mm -hmm. making their own decision that this is a plate that we want to buy, a message that I want to put on my car. Uh, the message in itself is not a religious message. Uh, to argue that choose life is an implicitly religious message is absurd. Uh, secondly, the organization that sponsors the plate, which is required under law, is a registered 501c3 recognized by the United States government as many organizations are as being tax exempt. Uh, the purposes yeah, for the which the they are incorporated exempt, so. are right. charitable purposes. And now you're proposing that people motivated by faith cannot organize for charitable purposes. No, not, not at all. Well, that's, that's what you're arguing. No, not, not at all. That's ridiculous because anybody right now could send $40 to CareNet mm -hmm. and get a bumper sticker for a buck and put that on your plate. Well, that's a separate issue. That on, no, that's it isn't. It's the same issue. thing because what you're saying is that the government has to step in somehow and pass the collection plate for CareNet, which is no, essentially that's an evangelical not what church. They're doing. Absolutely. You're saying that when the, the government state, is a deacon. When the state the and the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals addressed this very clearly, Mm -hmm. And they said, when the state creates this free speech arena, as they have done when they create the specialty plate programs that are, you're inviting private organizations to sponsor a plate, put their message out there, and collect some of the funds from it. When the state opens that free speech arena, mm -hmm. now whether they should have done that or not, that's another question. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, Rhode Island, like many other states, has opened that free speech arena. Once you do that, you cannot impose viewpoint discrimination. And anyway, we've got to take a break. We should point out also many other states have the Choose Life plate, including uh, the, the so-called blue states of Massachusetts and Connecticut. Ten News, Ten News Commerce will continue. We'll be back right after this.
Welcome back to 10 News Conference. Our guests today are Barth Dacey of the Rhode Island Right to Life Committee and Steve Alquist from the Rhode Island Humanist Organization. Let's talk about the Westboro Baptist Church. I oh. think lots of people know what that is. It's a large, widely known anti-gay group out of Kansas. I think it's out of Kansas, Topeka, Kansas. Mm -hmm. uh, it is coming here, so they say on their website, on August 1st, the day that gay marriage takes effect in Rhode Island. So it's a controversial group, and they intend to picket uh, Pawtucket City Hall, Providence City Hall, and Cranston City Hall. They're going to go to the clerk's office where these marriage licenses will be issued. Steve, uh, I'll ask you this first. Um, they do have a right to do this, right? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So they you would support their right to come in and do whatever they want to do, right? Well, not whatever they want to do, but well, within protest. the confines of the law, sure. Right. They can protest, and I think people have a right to counter-protest to ignore them, mm -hmm. to support them if they wish. I mean, that, all that would be fine. I think they're offensive, but there's plenty of things in the world that are offensive, and we just kind of deal with it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the cost of freedom. What is your feeling about this group? I, honestly, I really don't know anything about them. So, I mean, I, never I, heard I, of them? I, I think I've read probably some blurb in the past, but I really know nothing. These are the and ones who have, uh, have gone to military funerals mm -hmm. and, and yelled mm -hmm. at the mourners. Uh, yeah, I know, think I, I've read that, but... I, I don't know anything about the event and uh, you know for to be very clear Rhode Island right to life who I'm here representing today we don't have a stance uh, as okay. an organization our only purpose is to oppose the deliberate taking of innocent human life so we've just any of those other questions fall far beyond uh, our, our policies and principles and although I do about. know that the Westboro Baptist Church is also opposed to abortion on demand as well, well. The, that's you know, one of sure, and, and, uh, and I think Charles Manson probably supported abortion, but I don't think that's relevant to no, the I'm question. No, I'm just saying that they do, ha they do have those issues. Are you going to get politifacted on the Charles Manson? I yeah, may. Yeah, Gene <laughs> Emery usually picks those <laughs> tangential issues that are good yeah. for Well, let's stick on the abortion issue. As, as you know, Texas, <laughs> Governor, uh, Governor Perry in Texas just signed into law recently a new abortion mm -hmm. law. Uh, it, it's like 12 other states have the same law. It's a, they ban abortions after 20 weeks. Mm -hmm. In Texas, they've gone one step further than some of the other states by demanding that abortion clinics be, uh, ha their, their operating facilities be very comparable to, if not equal to, what you would find at a hospital. Mm -hmm. So wh wh what do you think of this law? First well, of all, I can guess, but John. I, I can give you, a, uh, I want to be careful not to be politifacted because I, full disclosure and confession, after the General Assembly ended and with the hot temperatures this week, I've been playing hooky from the office and spending most of my time at the beach. With that said, I followed a, l a little bit what's going on in Texas, mm -hmm. but I can't speak with great precision. I think that there are a few aspects to the law down there that passed, as I understand it. In fact, I think it was an omnibus bill that had a couple of bills rolled into one. The one you're referring to, based on my general recollections, it would Im impose the requirement that abortion clinics follow the regulations of, I think, surgical ambulatory clinics. Yeah, and the Could opponents to that, that. There's, there's a whole sci the scientific community said those requirements aren't necessary for abortion. Right. Well, and I think a lot of it was due to this case recently that we all saw on the national media in, in, in uh, Pennsylvania, this Kermit Gosnell. Is mm -hmm. You have so many women who, who, in fact, a woman died because you have abortions being performed in uh, conditions that are unsafe and unsanitary, and uh, women's lives are at risk. And I think the whole purpose of that bill was in reaction to make sure that, you know, the Kermit Gosnell thing is not happening in Texas. Mm -hmm. Steve, what is your, your opinion of the Texas law? I think we can see the way people have reacted to that law in Texas. We had the, what they call the people's veto, when they got out and they tried to shout it down the first time and kept that law from passing. And then we see the political machinations of Governor Perry when he goes and reconvenes the legislature to pass the law a second time. I mean, you know, three bites at that apple in Texas <coughs> to make it go through. And the popular outrage that's gone on and the mobilization of women who want their rights to be protected. I think these are all, you know, as terrible as that law is in many ways, um, and the fact that it's going to um, curtail women's access to reproductive services. It also has, I think, galvanized women and people across the country to know this is a very serious issue and that people are out to undermine people's legitimate constitutional rights. By the way, the Supreme Court upheld this as a constitutional right way, way back. And these um, nipping away at the edges of this law is uh, what groups like Rhode Island Right to Life are trying to do in Rhode Island. But you object to the government working around uh, shouting protesters? I think what happened was we saw a pot, well, we saw a filibuster being used. We, yeah, absolutely. I think I do because I think there was a um, 
the legislature was convened, the way the Texas law works is that legislature was supposed to be convened in a special assembly to deal with tax issues. And the governor went and he decided to use it specifically for the abortion issue, which is he was using a legislative end run to make this happen. So the people got out and they said, we're objecting to the way this law is being passed, the, the, you know, the 11th hour way, the, the way the General Assembly pushed through the, um, uh, the plate bill even. But, but you say the people got out. So a couple of hundred people can disrupt the, the mechanism of government if they're loud enough and you endorse that. I'm saying that when people have let their voices be known, so as far as free speech goes, absolutely, they should have let their voices be known. I, I would disagree with that. You know, when I first saw the, the horrifying images coming from Texas, horrifying? you know, people chanting Hail Satan and shouting down the legislature gathered together, it reminded me very much of what happened at our rally a couple of years ago at the State House uh, in January of. Uh, uh, I believe 2011 when this Occupy movement came mm -hmm. down and we have a peaceful rally that we've been having for almost 40 years and they came and shouted us down and pelted us with condoms. Yeah, I've this is the kind of thing that, that I've they never heard did that confirmed. down, well it was confirmed by the state police, thank you. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of thing that happened, uh, I was there. And Capitol you get hit police. by condoms? I did not and in fact did you see condoms coming it's from funny, upstairs? I, right. I the saw police did not confirm. Uh, my predecessor Rita Parkett was sitting there and, and it was such mayhem there at the time and so many things happening and, and you know they're chanting they're shouting us down they're shouting down a priest trying to give a blessing uh, they're, they're shouting down legislators they're they're jostling legislators uh, they're you know dancing around in front of our podium and trying to squeeze us out and I saw something come down and hit Rita Parquette who was my predecessor I was kind of like gee what is that and so I only later on was I able to ask her and she said well the reason I got up and left is because I got hit with a condom and so and then I talked to many other witnesses and yeah it, it was happening and a state trooper confirmed that, that he saw it happening so I don't think this is something they're denying anymore uh, no, you know I, it has I, been no, confirmed. I've, you said it's, there's, there's but this is what we saw in Texas we saw mm -hmm. mob rule we saw people who were arrested for unruly behavior and again I don't think that is part of the political process can you imagine if pro-lifers ever did that the double standard. I mean, we, it would be front page. Well, pro lifers uh, have yeah. been outside of abortion <laughs> I mean, uh, clinics pro, and pro shot people. Have, have yeah. Pro lifers do do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, very, very right. rarely. Arguably, when right. you look at the facts, the pro life movement has been the most peaceful civil rights movement, human rights movement. If in, you in, consider in those history. photographs of chopped up fetuses peaceful. Uh, well, yeah, but we're not the ones chopping up those babies. You're holding up the pictures, and that's not violence. Well, I'm not, and we well, don't the do that violent right to life. But I certainly. Uh, I've seen I certainly of agree Planned with the right, that, uh, and I would group? hope that Steve agrees with the right of these people to hold up the pictures. And I would ask, what's more unjust and what's more horrifying, the picture or the reality itself? No, no, it. but all right, we've, we've got to take a break. <laughs> Ten news conference will continue right after this. A wrapped con this program again on our website, turn to 10.com. We also have an archive of past programs. Click on politics. Welcome back to the news conference. Our guests this Sunday are Barth Vase Bracey, I'm sorry, from the Rhode Island Right to Life Committee and Steve Alquist from the Rhode Island Humanist Organization. Uh, on, the, on the issue of abortion, uh, Mr. Bracey, let me ask you this. Why should men, mm. meaning our legislators and everything, ha have any say at all in what a woman does with her body? Well, number one, this is, a, this, this is the greatest human rights issue of our time. Uh, you, we have an issue where innocent human lives are being taken uh, under the sanction of law since Roe v. Wade. Uh, regardless of whether you're male or female, it doesn't matter. There are probably just as many, if not more, women being aborted, baby girls being aborted. Uh, so it, it's not a male-female issue. It's a matter of do we stand up for the protection of innocent human life? And I, I don't think that is uh, 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 an issue of, of so, gender. So in your, this, this 20 week rule is, uh, is irrelevant from the moment of conception. Mm -hmm. right. There is a, uh, a life that needs to be protected by law. And that, you know, that is science. Uh, when you look in the, you know, standard molecular biology textbooks on, on development, human life begins uh, at conception. You have a specific uh, new human organism. How do we know it's human? Well, because from DNA, so we know rape, today incest, what we didn't know. All those things, you, you, I think you, you have to follow a principle, baby. which is that the deliberate taking of innocent human life is, I, 
would hope we all agree is unjust. And then we have to look and we say, is this a human life or is this not a human life? Now, the legislation we're talking about in Texas, the legislation we're talking about in Rhode Island is nowhere near uh, what, what we're proposing Steve, what, what about that, uh, the, 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 the claim of, this, of the science that uh, at the moment of conception there is life, yeah. human life? Yeah, I think well, it's for certainly life, for sure. Yeah, well, just a, a quick note. I think it's kind of odd or ironic that we're like the House of Representatives, four guys sitting around talking about an issue that's really, really important to women. Um, but, uh, you know, and in fact, it's central to women's uh, reproductive um, health care and health care in general. This is a health care issue. And the idea that there's human life at conception is like kind of there's human life in our blood. There's human life in our skin. We are all genetically human. So to say that a fetus or a um, fertilized egg is a human being, it's a potential human being. It's potentially going to be human at the, or a human being when it's born. In fact, we ha why do we have birthdays and not conception days? Because we know upon being born is when you're a person. You're separate from your mother, and now you're, we consider you to be a, a, an entity. So I think Roe v. Wade was originally decided pretty smartly and pretty well when they said, you know, third trimester, blah, you know, these, these ideas there that we can have, you know, the, you have the first two trimesters to consider and choose to be a mother, not have it forced on you because of some accident in birth control or for some other reason. You know, it's about choice and about make, becoming a mother because you want to be, not because you were forced to by some accident. So it doesn't seem there's ever going to be a way you two can come to an agreement on this. One of the issues that the uh, General Assembly was wrestling with uh, this last session mm -hmm. was the provision of abortion services under the uh, health exchange the health and all exchange. the different uh, insurance options for Rhode Islanders and whether or not there should be a separate fee mm -hmm. for uh, for abortion services mm -hmm. as opposed to? Well, the the, uh, the health benefits exchange, which was part of, uh, and just for the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, I'm going to call it Obamacare because President Obama himself said that he's okay with that term, and it's a shorter term. Part of Obamacare required, as you recall, the establishment of these insurance exchanges in each state. And so here in Rhode Island, in compliance with Obamacare, we're one of the 17 states that is actually doing this ourselves rather than letting the federal government handle it. A couple of years ago, when the exchange was first proposed legislatively, uh, we availed of one of the options that was specifically written into the law passed by Congress back in 2010, uh, which is states may opt out and it's right in there, section 1303 of, of the act, states may choose to opt out of abortion coverage in the exchange by affirmative right. legislative we, yeah, we've action. We've got about a minute and a half left, so go ahead. And we tried to do that. The governor didn't like it. He threatened to veto. The bill didn't pass. And he said, you know what? I'm just going to do this massive new government program that's going to ensure 100,000 Rhode Islanders in the first year by executive order. Uh, we believe that's illegal. We filed a lawsuit. And now we tried to... Uh, you wanted to put in some protections because which would, then which would create 20 new health insurances that do not have abortion well insurance. what came out is his executive his director of the health benefits exchange christine ferguson testified before the house finance committee okay, wait, wait, that yeah, all you, 28 you, 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 of those I'm plans give cover about abortion. 20 seconds to respond to that word, yeah they, wrong. um any uh faith-based insurance program can enter the exchange if they wanted to and so far no there's no faith based this is about a mandatory abortion fee in the all 28 of the plans on chafee's health it's benefits a, exchange a, a mandatory abortion fee is a made-up term it's it's a mandatory abortion fee yeah. on all 28 of Chafee's plans. Um, and gov all no government plans. funds can yeah. be spent on abortion. We're out of time. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Barth Bracey from the Rhode Island Rights to Life Committee and Steve Alquist from the Rhode Island Humanist Organization. For Bill Rapley, I'm Jim Chiricani. Thanks for watching this edition of 10 News Conference. Have a great Sunday.